All right, little chickpeas. Today, we are going to be learning about factual questions and how to answer them in our comprehensions. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to pick out key words in a comprehension question, skim or look through the passage for the correct paragraph to focus on, and then you scan or look through the paragraph to lift the accurate answer to the factual question. But in the first place, what is a factual question? Basically, a factual question is a type of question where the answers can be directly found in the text and you don't have to uh, try to twist it too much. So what you do is you look at the question and then you pick out the key words in the question. And that is very important because sometimes I see that your papers are a little bit too clean. You have to be underlining the key words in the question so that you know what to look out for. And then after that, you hunt for the same word or a similar word in the paragraph. And that is usually where your answer should lie, roughly. So how do you know which paragraph? Well, it's usually given to you in the question itself. Uh, but what happens if they don't give the paragraph number in the question? Okay, if they don't give you a paragraph number, then you must ask yourself where the answer to the previous question was. Where the answer to the previous question was. Usually, and I'm saying usually, not always, huh? The answer to the next question is after, after the answer to the previous question. Okay, the easiest type of factual question to answer is the one where the keyword in the question matches the word in the passage. So it is easy to see that the answer must be somewhere around there. So, okay. Let's look at this example. Singaporeans are living longer and not having enough babies to replace themselves, meaning the swiftly aging population has fewer working citizens supporting the growing pool of elderly. So, if you look at the question, it says, what kind of problem, so it must be a problem, will an aging population, aging population, cause for, for who? For Singapore. So there are three key elements in that question that you must uh, be very careful of. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to find where the answer is because you have the phrase aging population within your paragraph. And you know, of course, that the answer should be around there, meaning either before or after the phrase aging population. So of course now, the trick is to figure out what is the problem. And uh, we have to ask ourselves, is it the fact that Singaporeans are living longer that's a problem? Cannot be, right? So is it the fact that not having enough babies is a problem in itself? and uh, having not enough babies, is that a problem? Yeah, it could lead to a problem, but it, in itself, it's not a problem. So, uh, what about maybe the fact that there are fewer working citizens supporting the growing pool of elderly? So, does that sound more like a problem? Yes, it does. So, the answer is, it means that there will be fewer working citizens to support the growing pool of elderly. And if you notice, I copied it word for word. And I really made sure that it was in a complete sentence so that the examiner will not misunderstand me. And I want you to have this habit of checking to see whether you copied down everything correctly because if you just miss out one keyword, 
Like for example, the word working here, the examiner might not want to give you the mark because what kind of citizens are we talking about to support the growing pool of elderly? We are talking about working citizens, not any other kinds. I mean, after all, babies could be citizens, but are they supporting the growing pool of elderly? No. All right, it has to be working citizens. Sometimes the key word or phrase in the question may not appear in the passage, so you have to guess which part of the passage is the answer. So we try looking for a meaning in the passage that is similar to the key words in the question. Sometimes it may not even be word for word. It could be similar ideas. And you have to really look at the key words in your question to try to figure out what the idea is. All right, let's take a look at this example. It's exactly the same as the previous question. There's no difference at all, except for the question itself and how they chose to phrase it. So, they asked instead this time, why is the growing percentage of elderly people where in Singapore a problem for the country? So, actually, it's no different from the previous question. Again, we are just simply referring to the aging population, okay? Because it's the same as your growing percentage of elderly people. And the answer is exactly the same, of course. No difference at all. So what this means is you have to look for similar ideas or words in the paragraph to find your answer. You then copy the answer word for word. Yes, copy. Unless the question asks you to use your own words. And this is very important because the moment you, they ask you to use your own words, it means that you must rephrase the answer. Either you really replace the words word for word, or if you remember what I taught you about who did what, you rephrase it that way. Who did what? Now, you try to directly answer the question directly. Please don't beat around the bush. Do not just copy the answer wholesale from the passage. I do not want to see you lifting an entire chunk of um, words from the passage. Just lift what is necessary. And why do I stress that? Because you must only copy the part that answers the question. If you copy irrelevant material, it will show the examiner that you don't understand the question and, of course, the examiner cannot give you the mark. If you copy sentences that do not answer the question, you will not get a single mark for the question. You must copy the relevant part. The keyword here is relevant part. Accurate. It must be accurate. Like I said before, if you leave out just one keyword, again, the examiner may not give you the mark at all. All right, let's take a look at some examples now. So, sample text one. Inline skating is one of the most popular outdoor sports in the United States and it has already attracted more than 20 million participants worldwide. It allows people to take full advantage of the city streets, turning them into concrete playgrounds. If any of the X Games or Extreme Games activities are going to make it into the mainstream, this is likely to be the first. So, let us look at the first question. In paragraph one, uh -huh, paragraph one, where do people normally practice inline skating outdoors? So, of course, there are many, many elements here that we must take note of. For example, the word where tells us it's a place that we are looking out for. And, uh, of course, it has to be people and not some, something like dogs or whatever. And they have to practice inline skating practice inline skating and it has to be outdoors okay so to me the key words of course paragraph one is important but the key words are where because we're looking for a place and it has to be outdoors it cannot be anywhere else and of course it has to be people and it has to be about inline skating 
And of course, don't forget, this is a one-mark question, so you're only looking for one point. If it is just a one-mark question, and you have more than one point in your answer, you are probably wrong somewhere. So please do not copy too much, especially if it is a one-mark question. Alright, so we now look at paragraph 1 to find our answer. And we are looking for uh, where inline skating is practiced outdoors. Where? So, of course, we look for places, right? Where, right? Okay, United States is a place. Worldwide is something like a place or so. City streets is something like a place or so. And so is concrete playground. It's something like a place or so. A playground is something like a place. But exactly which answer here gives you the idea that it is practiced outdoors? Is it the fact that it is one of the most popular outdoor sports in the United States? No, that does not give us the idea that it is practiced outdoors. What about it has already attracted more than 20 million participants worldwide? Does it tell you it's practiced outdoors? No. It allows people to take full advantage of the city streets. Ah, now we're coming to... Yes, this thing here tells us that it is practiced outdoors. But now we get to in, into confusing territory here. You are also going to be tempted to copy this. Okay? Turning them into concrete playgrounds. Because you think that's part of the answer. So... Like I said before, you can only copy the part that directly answers the question. You cannot copy too much information. So, you can only reply, they practice it on the city streets. City streets, okay? And notice that I phrase it directly answering the question. Meaning that I used the words in the question to answer the question. I want you all to practice giving me complete answers. Let's look at some of the kinds of answers that students sometimes give. Uh, the first answer, they practice it outdoors. Now, we've already mentioned the word outdoors before in the question. And you must give me a precise location where outdoors do they practice inline skating. You also have to directly answer the question. You cannot simply lift the entire sentence without uh, referring back to the question at all. So the question was, where do they practice inline skating outdoors? So you have to answer, they practice inline skating on the city street. You cannot just simply copy this because it doesn't answer the question at all. It doesn't directly answer the question. And how do you directly answer a question? Very simple. You look at the question and use the words in the question as part of your answer. Next, the third kind of wrong answer, and this is the most common kind of wrong answer we get, where you copy the part that is correct, but you also give additional information which is inaccurate. So, you have to just give me the part where they tell us that they practice it on the city streets. But you cannot tell me about the part where it turns the city streets into concrete playgrounds because what has this underlying part got to do with the actual answer? So you have to really be very alert and, uh, and, and really directly answer the question. Don't forget, one mark question, one point. Two mark questions two points, three marks, three points, etc, etc, etc. All right, let's proceed to the next question. Sample text two. The first patented inline roller skates were registered in Paris in 1819. The first modern inline skate was produced by the Chicago Skate Company in 1960. However, the line floundered as no one bought the skates, so it was put on hold. 
Then, in 1979, a hockey player by the name of Scott Olson found a pair of the Chicago inline skates in a sporting goods store and bought them. Over the next two years, he modified the skates by adding urethane wheels and a rubber heel brake and with the original pattern from the Chicago company formed a new company, Rollerblade. His new improved design set the stage for the world to discover inline skating. All right, question two. In paragraph two, why did the company that manufactured the first modern inline skate fail to succeed? So, we have now come to a question where you may not see the exact same words in the passage. And you have to basically look for uh, related ideas or related words. And of course, we look for key words in paragraph two. So paragraph two is definitely a key phrase. Why did the company, so we are looking for a company, that manufactured the first inline skate, okay, so they must be the ones who manufactured, okay, and it must be the first modern inline skate, and they must have failed to succeed. Why did they fail? So the clue is fail to succeed. And are there any phrases or words within the same uh, paragraph, paragraph two, that have the same meaning? So the examiner will not always phrase the question using the same words in the passage you have to look for related ideas or related words. And don't forget, it's a one-mark question. So now, I have to scan the paragraph for the related ideas or the related words. So, looking at the paragraph, I ask myself, is this a reason for failure? The first patented inline roller skates were registered in Paris in 1819. No, right? What about the first modern inline skate was produced by the Chicago Skate Company in 1960? Is this also evidence of failure? No, right? However, the line floundered as no one bought the skates, so it was put on hold. So is, is that a reason why uh, the company could have failed? Yes, right? No one bought the skates, okay? And um, you have to ask yourself again, how many marks is it? So... It is a one mark question, so you, as long as you tell me that no one bought the skates, you're absolutely correct. Okay, so the following answers are all acceptable. The line floundered as no one bought the skates, so it was put on hold. Now, some of you are going to say, hey, but teacher, this is extra information, what, put on hold. Uh, yes, that is part of um, uh, the, it could be part of the answer as well because uh, naturally, since no one bought the skates, uh, the company was put on hold, meaning the company uh, stopped functioning for a while and uh, that could be, you know, part of the evidence of failure as well relating to this point here that no one bought the skates. So that is okay, but if you really want to make sure that you don't give extra information, then just tell me no one bought the skates, okay? Um, of course, you could also give me the rest of the answer that you copied from the paragraph, the line floundered as no one bought the skates, um, or you can just simply tell me no one bought the skates. Also, if you don't know the meaning of the word floundered, then of course just tell me the line failed, lah, because you know for sure that no one bought the skates is the cause of the failure. And it's only a one mark question, and this is one point, one point. The following answers are all unacceptable. Uh, the first one is obvious because you've given irrelevant information. The first modern inline skate was produced by the Chicago Skate Company in 1960. Are you answering the question? Are you directly answering the question? What has this underlined part got to do with the answer? You are not answering the question. Uh, the next type of wrong answer basically is uh, giving part of the answer, but you're not giving uh, the full answer. The line floundered. Floundered is failed. Okay, y you, you have not answered the question. 
and uh, no one bought is also equally unacceptable. Why? Because what did they buy? You must give me all the relevant, relevant, relevant information. Let's move on to the next example. Sample text 3. These days, inline skaters fall into four distinct categories. Recreational skaters, hockey players, racers, and aggressive skaters. The latter two make up the extreme side of inline skating. The racers concern themselves only with speed, and their events range from long-distance endurance challenges to all-out short-distance sprints. They dress for speed as well, wearing bright, skin-tight spandex suits that cut wind resistance, reduce abrasions in case of a fall, and most importantly, look very slick and ultra-high-tech. All right, once again, let's look at the question. In paragraph 3, and of course we have to highlight paragraph 3 because it is an important part of the question. Why do racers and aggressive skaters, again, important, wear special clothes when they skate? So, we're talking about clothes here, all right, and uh, when, when they skate, okay? And uh, it is a three-mark question, very important, three-mark question. And of course, it is easy to see which part of the paragraph the answer lies because of the words racers and aggressive skaters. So let's look for that part of the paragraph that has those words. So we find the words Ra um, racers and aggressive skaters over here, okay? But now we have to look for um, some sort of uh, uh, word or some sort of idea that uh, tells us that they, they dress up for something or they wear certain clothes for something, okay? So um, it cannot be this part here, the latter two make up the extreme side of in line. That's nothing to do with clothes, right? What about this part here? The racers concern themselves only with speed and their events range from long distance endurance challenges to all out short distance sprints. Again, this has nothing to do with clothes. What about this part here? They dress for speed as well. Have we come to the part about clothes? Yes, because we see the key word dress. And now we have to be alert to look for three points why they dress this way. So, they dress for speed. Okay, this is like one reason, right? They dress because they want to be fast. Uh, they wear bright, skin-tight spandex suits that cut wind resistance. Okay, is this wearing of the bright, skin-tight spandex suits a reason? Not really, right? Um, but if you include it as part of your answers, uh, it, it will not necessarily be wrong either. I'll show you why later. Okay, but the main reason is for speed. And because they want to cut re wind resistance, they want to reduce abrasions in case of a fall. And most importantly, look very slick and ultra high tech. Okay, so if you give me any three of these answers, you are correct. So like I mentioned before, uh, if you look at the answer, they dress for speed as well, wearing bright skin-tight spandex suits that cut wind resistance. Okay, if you lift this entire part, nobody will say you're wrong. Okay, so if you think that the entire part answers the question, don't change anything. Uh, if you want to phrase it in a who did what or what did what kind of a sentence, then you can also say, they are bright skin-tight spandex suits help to cut wind resistance, reduce abrasions in case of a fall, and make them look very slick or very high-tech. That is also perfectly acceptable. Alright, the following answers are all wrong, or you only get uh, a partial uh, mark for it. Uh, the racers concern themselves only with speed, and their events range from long-distance endurance, challenges, blah, blah, blah. Again, if you notice, right, it is copying irrelevant information, okay? All this is all irrelevant, all irrelevant, okay? So you have to be careful to give me only the part 
that get, that directly answers the question. And of course, if you just give me one point, you get one mark. Okay, some people forget sometimes that it's a three mark question, and therefore you have to find three points. So, in conclusion. I want to remind all of you that it is important first to uh, highlight the key points in your question. I don't want to see clean papers, overly clean papers in the future. Uh, it is also important to look for uh, the same words or uh, similar ideas or words within the passage that will answer the question. And of course, uh, having uh, looked at the part you know, that answers the question, you have to only copy down the relevant information because if you do not copy down only the relevant information, the teacher is likely not to give you a full mark or uh, it's likely not to give you a mark at all. So that's all for now, chickpeas. If you have any question, you know where to look for me.